My name is Cynthia. My husband calls me Gracie, and this has become Gracie's Front Garden. I even have a Facebook page for it, so I hope you'll come and check it out. Today, I would love to show you how easy it is to have a butterfly garden, particularly an urban butterfly garden. All you need is sun most of the day, so even having a tree part of the day is not so much a problem. You need to have food, which is nectar plants, and most every plant that flowers is a nectar plant. And you need plants that form hosts for butterflies to lay their eggs, that become caterpillars, and ultimately a place for the chrysalis to form and for the butterflies to come out. This little strip next to the street is often called the hell strip in the south because it is so hot and it is so difficult to grow things, but it's perfect for butterfly plants. Of course, when you're in the city, you need to know what your code allows. For example, my code says that I cannot have anything that goes over the curve. So this blue bonnet is the limit. And fortunately, it's Texas's own flower, so no one will have you mess with a blue bonnet. As you do your butterfly garden, the nectar plants that are oftentimes considered to be sort of the boring, old, tried and true plants, like marigolds, uh, are really wonderful because they produce many flowers that have a virtually constant source of nectar and they are so easy to both grow from annuals or to propagate from seed. In fact, as the seed, as the flower dies, it forms seeds and all you have to do is sprinkle them on the ground. That's also true for zinnias. And zinnias come in little packages or you can even save the seed head. So once you scratch up the soil, you sprinkle the seeds, and soon you will have an abundance of zinnias that will continue to bloom in from about six weeks throughout the summer. But you have to give them nectar sources now. So we have old plants, new fancy uh, blooming plants, growing together, and butterflies love them all. The more color, the better. They also need water. You see here, the simple soaker hose will allow the water to go to the roots of the plants, but it also allow little puddles for the butterflies to lay in because many of them are considered puddlers, and they need that too. Salvias, old tried and true plants that grow virtually in the fields in West Texas will stay here in your butterfly garden and produce uh, nectar and food throughout the year. One of the favorite planets, plants are coneflower or echinacea. This particular coneflower was planted several years ago and it propagates naturally. Year after year they come back, some from roots, some from seeds. Wherever your butterfly garden is, there will be plants that are particular for you that will do this and be, continue the food abundance year after year. Texas has this tall purple phlox, and we also have lemon drops, all food sources. But one of the things that a butterfly needs is a place to lay its eggs and to produce caterpillars. For many years, people avoided the caterpillars. They put out compounds to destroy it so that they could protect their plants. That compound, uh, known as Bt, causes the actual caterpillar to either not form or to die. Now we've learned that we need the caterpillars because we love the beautiful butterflies. This particular food source is so tough that once it gets going, it grows uh, abundantly, and it is called a passion vine. This particular Passiflora incarnata incense is 
makes the gorgeous purple flower and all summer long you will see butterflies and bees flock to this area. For now, the Texas Tough roses like Old Blush and Cecil Bruner are here and they call the butterflies and the butterflies will then lay their eggs and propagate for the future. Here we have another butterfly favorite which is called the Penta. I just put these little Pentas in yesterday. This particular area has some shade from Belinda's Dream Rose and it's an experiment to see if the Penta will have enough sun to grow and continue to be a nectar plant. I think that I'm going to get really lucky here because Pentas are pretty adaptable. We also have Gomfrina, we have more of the African marigolds, and we have this little weed called henbit. Henbit is abundant in the winter, and many people hate it in their gardens. Honestly, I'm not a big fan either, but it is a nectar source for the butterflies and for the bees throughout our winter, and so I try to find the beauty in it. Here we have a budlia or butterfly bush. You notice it doesn't have any flowers on it yet. By the end of summer, it will. Penstemon is a favorite to bees. I have to just mention it while we're here because only bees, hummingbirds, and little flies can get in here. So they, uh, they cherish this. Over here, we have a little area set aside for the monarchs. Monarch butterflies use many of the same nectar sources that the other butterflies do. This little lantana put in with the Celosia intense is, will bush out through the summer and will hang down. City code, it will not go over the curb because it is in this pot, so I am legal and the butterflies will love to drink this nectar and will be drawn to this purple flower long after the rose Martha Gonzalez has taken a break from the heat. Monarchs need a particular type of plant called a milkweed. We often kind, times call it butterfly weed. This particular plant is toxic to other butterflies. And the monarch butterfly will drop down and she will lay eggs under the leaves. One by one, you'll see her just go up and down and up and down. And that's your clue that the butterfly is planting her eggs. What's fascinating, even though milkweed has been in great abundance over many years, What's fascinating about this is the monarch seems to know how many eggs and ultimately caterpillars can eat from a particular plant. And she stops them. Even though we'll see the leaves just eaten off and stripped down, it never seems to be too much for the milkweed to come back. It will also spread through seeds. This year, uh, my milkweed did not return from the roots and as a monarch came by and smiled at me and said where's lunch I s went out and purchased some from a local nursery. The tricky thing here is that the milkweed plants when people buy a plant we want that plant to be beautiful and I've heard that some of the growers will actually treat the plant so that a butterfly will not use the leaves until it's sold. And that means you have to wait for a whole season. I don't know it, which do and which don't, but I do know when I purchased these, I asked the nursery and they said that theirs were definitely grown natural, essentially organic. So they are ready for butterflies or monarchs to lay their eggs and get on with it.
when I go to the nursery, oftentimes I will look for plants that butterflies love and that will be hardy. I had Passiflora cerulea, which is a native of Brazil, for seven years, but this year it did not come back. I went and purchased more because this is not only a food source, a nectar source, but it also makes beautiful passion fruit. And while I would like to try them, I know for certain that my, my squirrels love to eat them. Lantana can be a big plant or it can be a small plant. The giant swallowtails, the tiger swallowtails, every butterfly that I've ever seen loves a lantana. Again, you see these tiny little flowers and each day the little flowers open and there are new nectar sources. If you have one flower per plant, then you really don't have that many options. With the tiny flowered plants, you have new nectar virtually every day. It's also wise to remember to plant your plants and to water with a soaker hose. Many of us water first thing in the morning. That's when the nectar is the most rich and the most available. If you spray it with a hose, you're spraying out the nectar. So water from the roots if you can, or if you must use a hose, water after the morning is over. Even though that's not the most prudent watering system, it is the most prudent for the nectar to be most available. So kind of wait until late afternoon, and I know that that's ultimately a choice. This ugly area right here will soon hold the Passiflora cerulea. And right now it has honeysuckle. Honeysuckle is very invasive, which means it is a highly successful plant here in Texas. Honeysuckle holds my heart because I happen to be at the right place at the right time to watch a mama squirrel. She had her squirrels in one of the little squirrel houses here we have in our yard. But it was time to go up high. This little squirrels were really active. They were running down the tree and onto the ground. The ground is the most dangerous place for a squirrel. And so I had watched her building her nest up high in the tree. This was the time where she was going to take the children up. But she didn't come, she didn't just push them. What she did was she sat with these two little squirrels and gave each a section of honeysuckle. Not one, but each. And she looked at each squirrel and she said, as if she was to say, the sweetness will follow us to the new home. One sat eating the honeysuckle, the other went with mom up into the tree. Later she came back and got the second one. And so to me, as ugly as this may seem, it is a warm reminder of the sweetness and compassion of our